Do you want to intro instead? Do I want to intro instead? Yeah. I'll do you, really. Okay, oh, right. right like, this has to be good, though, because look. Half of these podcasts oh, my are just so watery. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, that, that's, I've never done that. I've never, I've uh, never done that. Uh, guys, I can't do the podcast. <laughs> do you know that half of this podcast I, is basically us pressing a button to have the jukebox do an impression? Like, yeah, yeah, I can't do your voice. What's, what's, I feel like it might be inappropriate. Why can't you do, do my voice? voice. I feel like it might be inappropriate. <laughs> we are here um, to talk the five yes. phase plan. The phases. By the way, the phases. The phases have got a bit of a, a bad rep on on the YouTube game because of oh why people. Go, yeah, because a lot of people go, oh, what phase are Arsenal now as as a joke? And I'm like, well, we're right now top of the league, so the phases looking a bit phasey. Well, and this is Bavs esque. I've got a quote for us to, to kick us off. <clears throat> right. That wasn't, that wasn't as good as you. On if we are in phase four of his five-phase five, five phase plan, this is Mikel uh, was asked in his pre lucent press conference about where Arsenal are in the five-phase plan. He said, let me go back to the computer. We're not far. I think we're getting close to that. But once you get to certain points, you go back to phase one again and you want to build it uh, build on it and you want to be better and you have to continue to evolve on if he can explain each of the phases no 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 maybe one day we'll have a coffee and i'll tell you how it works and i think lads we should try and go through and identify what we think every phase is and how mad is it that he thinks we're still only in phase three i, I don't think he believes that i'll be real i don't think he believes that. Yeah. i think he's saying that to get fans more excited but I think he believes that we are in phase four unless there is something very blatantly obvious he can fix to the team which I'd I mean, what's the next step? Apart from maybe even a striker, people are you know, quite sure right now because the fact that we're scoring more goals and you've got Havertz playing and you've got him helping that Saka and Martinelli and go. So if if we are in phase three right now, then what is phase four going to be? Well, let's try, and, let's try and work that out. I do, I do find it interesting that he doesn't want to be quoted on that. And I think it does make sense if you yeah. think about it because... Ultimately, well, you're just line, you're just right, creating you a rod for your own back. back you just you're just yeah, you're just yeah. creating a rod for your own back. So, oh, uh, well, you missed out on the phases, have you? Yeah, I mean, there was a video actually on Alex's channel, right, about the five phase plan. So, what what, what was your five phases you saw as Mikel's okay. plan? I'll start off. I'll start off with phase one, and then maybe you boys can take the other ones. I think phase one was essentially all based around resetting. I think that is the word I'd use, a reset, a reset the club culture, a reset of standards, a reset of um, how we approach every aspect of the club. So things like getting the scouting sorted, um, maybe resetting, obviously Mikel wasn't necessarily part of this, but an, a massive part of Mikel's remit and the, or so has become is his upwards management, how he's managed sort of the, the the board of that relationship. I think he's a massively underrated part of his his tenure. And when people compare him to sort of the Pochettinos and the, the Ten Hags, I think you can see and hear from the quotes that come out and the and the sort of the clues that we get that he has a much better relationship, a much much closer relationship with the likes of Josh and so on. It's even little things like in the All or Nothing documentary when Josh is um in the canteen and they've just, I think we'd either just lost to City 5 0 or we're about to lose to City, City, City yeah. 5 0. Yeah, after. So three games into that run, Josh is going, We've got you. It's all good. Like he's at the, he's at the training ground stuff. I think that relationship is clearly really uh, key. And I wouldn't, I would be surprised if Ten Hag and uh, Glazer and so on have, have that sort of relationship. So I think, yeah, a level of sort of upwards management, ensuring that that alignment was there, get all getting on on board, uh, sorting out the sort of the, yeah, as I say, the standards and so on. And then starting to, getting some coaching uh, into the into the team and getting some clear principles. I think this is partly why the uh, the, the football felt so robotic for a while is, is you know, obviously Mikel is kind of implementing, if you want to call it positional play or whatever, but certainly very key pr ideas from that. Key principles about when you are here, as we hear the players talk about all the time, you need to stand there. When you stand here, you need to stand there. I think that's why, you know, think back on that like horseshoe of doom sort of scenario. Um, I think that's partly why that happened. I imagine phase one was a kind of, I, I don't really know, imagine, I don't know exactly how they thought it would end. Maybe with a, I don't know, maybe with a, getting the squad aged down or something like that. Maybe it's a, a sort of a, a marker. I wonder what you guys think. Possible, I possible. Think, uh, go on, George. I, I honestly, I, I agree with a lot of what you said. I definitely think it was a reset, but it was actually... I don't think there was any sporting ambition in the first phase. No, it was, I don't think so. I need you to trust me. And it really is that simple. And however that came across, and I actually don't think he even got into very many positional 
broad schemes. It really was patterns. There's a reason it felt robotic because I just think that he had to prove that he could have ideas that worked and he had to work on specific patterns of play because if you're trying to change somebody to change how they think, you don't say your entire outlook on life is wrong. Like, and that's, and that's really the level of what we were doing. Right. So I, I think that was the case. I think it was just about trust. And that's probably the only addition I'd make to it. I think there was no sporting ambition in the first phase. It was purely, let me get this team to trust me and trust me unequivocally. And that that was really the goal of phase one. So phase two, was there a, a signing maybe that signified the end of phase two? Phase two is a little bit different for me. That was the learning phase for me. That's when we properly introduced positional play. And I don't think so it was one signing. to reception to year one to year two. Well, the, the next one, well, the next What's one next was competing. Grade one. The, no, the next, the next one, learning, but earning the right to play, not to get too okay, philosophical. Okay, so you get golden time is honor. Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> try to have a serious objective here, but it's, it's, it is a little bit more sporting. I think there is a level of, of competing um, in, this, in this second phase. And uh, Europe was the minimal objective at that point. And it was, it was about... It was about the squad understanding where it was beyond just patterns. Now they were actually learning the philosophy of positional play and the bedrock. And some of that had growing pains, by the way. It had growing pains in terms of how Mikel had to man manage his use of the squad. That's why I think learning in general was phase two, where we weren't ready to compete, by the way. And uh, we may have been a little bit farther along. This is actually the period I would say we were in the, the year before, where I think we surprised ourselves because for me, the phase three aspect was uh, something else. But the first one was still learning, learning positional play and understanding where to be and having it not something that you have to think about where you have to refer to your flashcards on where you should be. It's like actually understanding it to a different level. Um, yeah. And so that transition took time because he Mikhail bought a new squad at that point. Mikel said on the 15th of March, 2023, what phase are we in now? Phase three. He tells ESPN. So I think phase two must have been the year before. Get, yeah, the year, year before, before to get ben back White into year. get back into Europe, yeah. to get back into that sort of competition. To to yeah, I think that that probably makes sense as a, as an outcome. Yeah, that that summer was massive. The signing of Odegaard, Ben White, Ramsdale, you know, all first teamers that got into the team. So big you know, spine. If you, if you look at it, right? Yeah. Exactly, exactly. The spine came in straight away. And so the, the phase three was to elevate us into not just Champions League, but to fight for a title. And that, of course, signified Sinchenko, Jesus, some players like that coming into the team instead. So last year was phase three. What else did we learn from last year, though? Was it the experience? Well, we're still in phase three, you know, supposedly from, from the latest comments, which is, you know, a, phase again, you know, it could all seem a little bit gimmicky, this, but I do think it's, it's, it's a good idea to have a sort of a, an idea of an, an, out, an outline of, you know, how are we succeeding? And keep it internal, but it's also nice to give a little bit away to go to fans, you know, we've got a plan here. United fans are just taking it right now, right? Yeah, exactly. What phase are we in? Exactly. Phase zero. Yeah, I think phase two is get back into Europe. I think phase three was about challenging, about seriously trying to looking like we can compete in these these top six games. I think also about maybe having, uh, maybe increasing the squad value, maybe having the players on contracts and those sorts of things. You know, by that point, we need to convince the players that this is the place for them to be so we can step forward into the next couple of phases. I think club culture by that point would be a big thing. Maybe, I mean, we haven't necessarily yet discussed the fans, but part of maybe phase one and two was probably about reconnecting the, the fan base yeah. and earning the trust of the fan base and how do we do that and it, you know it sounds you know and people will mock it but then at the same time we'll say look at Liverpool's culture and how they connected they are they've got a song they've got a you know a club culture they've got you know, all those things and those things that are I'm sure Arteta looks at and I, I, I find what interesting about Mikel is I think he said something recently about you know if we want to be the best team in the world we want to have the best stadium in the world these things to fans are who cares? Of course, primary thing, win games. But if you don't build the sort of the foundation of, you know, getting your academy scouting yeah. right and getting this the stadium right and ensuring, that, you know, the commercial deals are right and all those tertiary things for a manager, which obviously is supported by, the winning, the winning falls down. I think he said on the first day he came in, if you don't build yeah. a proper foundation, the, the tree's going to shake during hard times. And I think that must have been part of phase three. I think... The players definitely, it feels like the players are, need the fans on their side and it's a massive part of their thing. I just saw it last night where right towards the end of the game, the game's 2-0, it's basically done, we're in the 85th minute and the Luton fans are starting to take over in terms of the atmosphere because the Oz fans are kind of just going, right, game's over, let's, let's not go home. And I remember Raya turning to the clock and just getting them going 
yeah. trying to get them going again. Yeah. And that, like, the game's over. You don't need that atmosphere, but you could sense they, they want that so badly. Yeah. I don't know if you saw the clip of Pep uh, this week. I think it was it came out of him, a sort of clip in the, in the dressing room. Have you seen it, George? The clip of him in the dressing room after Southampton. Yeah. And he's talking and he says, you know, one of the big things he says is, you know, you gave, someone was giving the ball away and he was doing an impression of the players and you were all like this. Oh. And like, that is a massive, I remember when, when Mikel came in, you know, that that thing of, you know, when someone gives the ball away, I don't want to see your arms up in the air. I want to see you supporting him, encouraging him. And this is all the sort of cult, little cultural marking that was in prime to get to he, where he we made were. reference of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I think phase three is expecting to challenge. And, um, you know, Josh actually made a quote of it himself in an interview where he's like, winning the league naturally means that you're competing for the Champions League. And the most important thing is making sure that you're competing for your domestic trophy. And it naturally makes you one of the best teams in Europe because this is the best league in the world. And I think expecting to challenge is the thing because the year before when he said that we're ahead of schedule was because we were challenging and people were expecting us to maintain that challenge. That wasn't something he was ready for. And I think this idea of this season, by the way, people walked in and said, no, Arsenal are going to challenge for the league. I think that's phase three. Not quite winning it but expecting to challenge for major honors, both on the European scale and domestic scale and having the squad to do it, not just say like, oh, we're going to focus on the league. We're going to be very specific about the scenario we can challenge. No, no, we can challenge on all fronts consistently. That's phase three for me. Um, and the so sporting still objective, the, well, it's, it's still there because the phase four, I'll just loop it together. Phase four is winning a damn trophy. And, and making sure that you are at the top of the game and actually getting over the line is phase four to me. Um, and it has to be a major trophy, by the way, the Premier League or the Champions League. I'm not going to hide behind a domestic cup. I think that phase four is becoming a European powerhouse. You can do that only by either winning your domestic league or winning the Champions League. Yeah. I, I think if we go through so far, I think phase one is the reset. I think phase two is the learning. I think think phase three is the growing. I think phase four is the winning and establishing. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe we can come back to it. And I think phase five, maybe this is the way we go around these two. I think phase five is sort of putting down roots, solidifying. It's it's things like, are we era the- defining. Era defining. Are we the club that's in for Endrick? It's things like that. Are, are we maximizing every single aspect of this club and getting into those conversations year in, year out with Real Madrid, with Barcelona, with Bayern Munich, with Man City, whoever, whoever the powerhouses are. I think phase four is a little bit of an in-between period where we're still establishing and winning our first couple of things, you know, winning that first Premier League, hopefully winning that first Champions League, those sorts of things, you know, still signing, still, you know, doing all those things. And by phase five, you know, what I imagine what we would love is we have Phil Foden in our academy. That's what we'd love. We 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 don't need to try because, by the way, we've already bought in someone in phase three who's now coming through the academy who can be, I, I imagine, a lot of promotion, a lot of the way City do things, selling massively, you know, being able to sell assets for 60, 70 million pounds consistently. You're the world reference, right? Being like when, world we talked reference. About, yeah. when you talked Arsenal about the good. rice transfer, the whole thing was that Arsenal were coming to compete with City and the City project is clear. That's phase five. Like when you undoubtedly say the Arsenal project are clear, people will come to compete with you, no problem. But you are the reference the world looks towards as saying that project is successful. It's what success is. And it's come from a sustained period of winning. And you you, you look at it as an era. That's why I call it the era defining phase. And that for me won't happen until you've won at minimum two to three major honors and in different years as well. That's why it's important when I, when I hear fans talk about we want to be at Liverpool. I'm like, not really. Because they've had no, their I moment, agree. but they've not been sustainable. I mean, they've been there and thereabouts, but they've not been City. I want to be like City. Now, the thing with City is, do they have, have they done it legitimately? That's the question. So that's why I think George makes a good point. We could be that team that people reference to go, like if you're United right now, you're Chelsea right now, look into, they do it right now anyways, they go, what were Arsenal doing? What was Arteta doing? So the, we've automatically become a reference point, but to win a title, become, it will become even more of that. More of that. And I think, you can be that because what Arsenal have that Liverpool didn't have was funds and owners that are spending money. So though it'll be intriguing to see that if we do win a title this year, how do the owners react? Do we go and invest even more, or is it a bit well, okay? We've got we've got them over the line now. We can relax and let's see how the rest of the players play out. I I I feel 
that we will that we will continue to invest as, uh, to our, to our major capacity. I don't think you do the commercial deals that we do. I don't think you position ourselves as we have in world football in the way we have without a serious idea to invest. You know, there's the the way the Cronkies came in in 2018 and took full ownership. Since then, it's been consistent year on year investment, 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 and. You know, the Cronkies before had this kind of reputation, but I always feel we almost have to put a, a marker down in the sand and go, there was Cronkies pre-2018 and there's the Cronkies now. And I think we there's always Josh have to- Josh sort of, as a bookend and yeah. there's pre yeah, and post Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, of course. And I think l- last summer was the most important because people, there were people questioning, oh, you got top four now, you got your second place, mm-hmm. but will you, will you go the next step that you you weren't doing prior under Arsene Wenger? And they went and signed Declan Rice. So there's potential, that's why, that's why it's very exciting. But- I just want a title. So I don't care what phase it is. It could be phase one. It's going to be a title. <laughs> but I think one of the most exciting things is obviously this plan, you know, has clearly been around for a long time. And I'm sure it's adapted yes. and changed. I think Mikel have said it's adapted and changed and there will be loads of markers that we don't know about, you know, getting commercial revenues, getting, you know, sales or whatever it, you know, whatever it might be. I'm sure there'll be a huge plan there on some document on Mikel's computer and Josh, whatever. But I do- it's got th- a phase four Excel file. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But what is interesting is a lot of clubs want to get to phase four. You know, this is why I find I find the quote this week interesting is is competing is still only in the middle of the process. Competing. Winning is still not the end of the process. There is that final step of I and I truly believe of solidifying ourselves, as George said, era defining as a reference. Real Madrid, you know, pe- people say, oh yeah, how, we could never compete with Real Madrid. Well, one with that attitude, we never will. And two, how, can we not spend the same the amount of money? The Invincibles we, we did. did. Can we not spend the same amount of money as Madrid? We're in the biggest league in the world. We're spending more as much as anyone else. So, so we have the money. The resources aren't the issue. The issue is our belief in positioning ourselves as a club and getting to that point where Real Madrid for the last 20 years, every single year, they're one of the favourites of the Champions League. That's where we want to get to. And, and that you is the exciting want, part for me. Like era defining is, is talked about globally, but I also mean in terms of our own history. Like I, I just mentioned the Invincibles on purpose because we need to become a reference in our own history. There needs to be a George Graham era. There is the Arsene Wenger era that's represented by the Invincibles. And the Mikel Arteta era needs to be represented by a different identity and a different team. And that's era defining when you could pick out a team that stands above just a singular moment of success. And then the George and- Vuitts era. Well, that's that that's already here, lads. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But, we will, be, uh, but we will yeah. be there. We will be there. We will be there. <laughs> He's not gonna do it. It's crazy. He held. He held the urge. He held the urge. He he, he wants to do it, man. You could tell. Oh, no, no. Anyways, we'll guys, that's the part there. We will nope. be there. Yeah, that was it. That was a hard hold, Alex. That is the video there and there. And if you want to see our thoughts on Emil Smith Rowe and our thoughts of post Luton, you can find that on Patreon and for YouTube members as well. And for now, that is it. And we will see you very soon. Peace. Peace. Peace.